Hello friends, here we are once again. Grab your favorite beverage and join with me for our discussion on the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. Well friends, if you recall, of course last five Sundays we meditated on the Bread of Life discourse, but Really speaking, last nine Sundays, our scripture readings call us to walk in faith. Be men and women of hope. Nurture a confident and trusting relationship with the Lord and have courage to face the challenges of following Jesus as his disciples. To listen to the voice of God, to go to a quiet place with the Lord to show compassion uh, in generous and sacrificial giving and then again to be strengthened by the bread of life to take Jesus in as our bread of life to be disciples who are in a continuous process of transformation in Christ to make wise choices to choose God and God's ways in Jesus as we go about doing our daily work and fulfilling our responsibilities. I love what our Holy Father Pope Francis said, Christianity is not a school of ideas or collection of beautiful temples and lovely art. It is a living people who follow Jesus and give witness to him every day. We are not a religion of ideas or of pure theology of or beautiful things and commandments. No, we are a people who follow Jesus Christ and give witness. So that is what want to give witness to Jesus Christ. And this witness, friends, sometimes end up being giving one's life. These thoughts of our Holy Father are reflected in the scriptures reading of this Sunday. The readings give us good insight into the nature and purpose of our religion as a loving, loyal and obedient relationship with God expressed in generous service to God's people. So friends, our first reading from book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2 and then 6 to 8 speaks of religion as a covenant relationship with God sustained by observing the commandments that God gave Israel which also kept them united and protected by God just and mindful in dealing with others. So let me read the of first reading and comment on the first reading again open your holy bible the book of deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2 and then 6 to 8 it says moses said to the people now israel hear the statutes and decrees which i am teaching you to observe that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear of all, the, all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God's so close to it as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him, oh, what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today. 
friends, this Deuteronomy chapter 4 is very interesting. It is what the biblical scholars call a bridge passage between two important parts of a biblical book. The first three chapters of Deuteronomy recall all the wonders and mighty deeds God did for Israel in the Exodus and remind the readers of how often the ancestors rebel against God at that time. And then chapters uh, 5 to 11 will urge a new covenant obedience when the people take possession of the promised land so that God will bless them richly in the years to come. So chapter 4 describes how that will be possible. By obedience to the Torah that Moses has given to them at God's own commands. And so the keeping the law is an expression of faithfulness to God. But obedience is not to be thought and unthinking or based on fear. That is, Moses speaks against the legalistic approach to following the law. So instead, obedience must be based on knowing God and confessing how close God is to the Israelites in his caring and loving relationship. Again, it says, to be wise is to put into practice what the master teaches us so that it works out in life. So friends, the key to such a concept of Old Testament discipleship is the imitation of God's own goodness. And so that is why Moses emphasized the whole law as just and right for us. In short, friends, we can say that all that God has given us is good for us. And following the whole law makes our own life more whole. With the thought in our mind, I'd like to take you to our responsible psalm today, Psalm 15. Who may rest on your holy mountains, those who walk blameless and do the right, and speak truthfully from their heart. And the response beautiful one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. One who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Psalm 15. Well, friend, the Psalm 15 is a liturgical confession of worthiness to come before the Lord free of sin. So it is molded on many ancient examples of negative confessions found in Egypt and Mesopotamia because the worshippers approached the temple only after assuring the God that he has not committed the most common sin. Then God will hear and turn its face to the prayer uh, brought by the person. But Psalm 15, dear friends, combines several negative statements with some positive ones. They are general enough to cover the entire range of a person's behavior. That means integrity, blamelessness, truth, harming others, hurting neighbor. So such lists are like a shorthand reminder of what true faithfulness to God should be. And then when we come to the second reading, very powerful from St. James chapter 1, verses 17 to 18, and then move on to verses 21 to 22 and 27. Love the reading, dear friends. I really encourage you to read the little St. James. This is what our second reading is. Dearest but brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the fathers of light, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He will to give us birth by the word of truth, 
that we may be kind and first fruitful of its creatures. Humbly welcome the world that has planted in you and is able to save your soul. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourself. Religion is religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their afflictions and to keep oneself unstained by the world. What a powerful reading. In other words, dear friends, when you read that uh, reading from St. James, almost like we are hearing, hypocrites, be aware. People who like to fool themselves about what they are really doing should read the letter of James. Because he's the prophet against the hypocrisy par excellence. So today we begin five weeks of reading his letter. He starts by reminding his readers that the source of all truth and life is a God of goodness, not evil. He brings us to new birth through a new life in him. So all that is wrong would be abhorrent and far from God. So we must live as we are children of God. Because our answers are to, uh, uh, sorry, our actions are to reflect our role as sons or daughters of God our Father. So we must receive his word humbly. Listen to it and put it into practice. And St. James, dear friends, he echoes Paul in Romans chapter 8 here that we bear the living word of God in us as a first fruits of God's salvation. Friends, we are not yet fully with God. But his life is at work in us when we receive it like a child who grows when learning from the teaching and example of his or her parents. For the widow and orphans, see passages such as Exodus chapter 22 and Deuteronomy chapter 24, even Psalm 146. Because widows and orphans represents the most vulnerable and least protected of Israel's people. And so God insists that we must watch over them if we are to imitate God's care. It is the case even now for us, dear friends. You and I are called to protect the vulnerable, be sensitive to the needs of the others. They are among us. Well, friends, like I now like to move on to the gospel reading, rather long gospel, because Mark, though he has very short uh, chapters, but when he gives a point, he elaborates. So look at uh, Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, and 14 to 15, and then 21 to 23 in between. Mark also skips, uh, uh, sorry, the, our lectionary skips uh, very important parts with a purpose. Well, friends, this is what our gospel is. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact, all Jews do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, 
Well, did Isaiah prophesy about your hypocrites? As it written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts, yet disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All this evil come from within and they defile. Friends, when we study the Holy Bible, we learn the Pharisees were perhaps the most observant and at the same time most tolerant of all the various uh, religious parties at the uh, time of Jesus. They rejected the narrow limits of the Sadducees that demanded only action commanded in the Pentateuch itself, and they believe in adopting rules to life for the ordinary person. Over the years before the time of Jesus, they had developed what they call the oral law or body of tradition and options on what the law allowed and or did not allow that went beyond the strict words of the Pentateuch. So they saw their work in this as simply making clear what Moses had taught and thus the name oral law. It is true, Moses' law but had not been written down at the beginning. The human risk is setting new uh, regulations is that the group might treat them as more serious and more obligatory than the original law was. We are right and they are wrong. Becomes a tempting attitude. So Jesus saw some of this in those Pharisees who disregard what or with what he was teaching. So they often overlook the demands of Moses that centered on the work of justice and mercy in favor of conformity to the rules of uh, judges, teachers, and other experts. So Jesus is especially critical when human laws become more important than God's purpose. We all too often, dear friends, cloak our wishes as thoughts that they were God's rules for others. Friends, the purpose of knowing the merciful God is sacrifice to maintain the position and power of the keepers of the law. So on the spiritual level, it's like certain charities that beg for money but spend 80% of what they collect on their own salaries and benefits. So that little if any, gets to the people who needs it. All right, friends, now, after listening to all these three readings, how do we understand all that? Well, friends, again, as I said, quoting our Holy Father, Pope Francis, at the very beginning, religion often wraps itself in non-essentials. If we would settle for what God asks for us in the scriptures, we would stand on firm ground and not frighten people. And we will not even frighten people and off because of our own ideas or our own thinking of do's and don'ts. So this is stated quite clearly 
in today's reading from Deuteronomy. The Lord says, You shall not add to what I command you, no subtract from it. Yet, the fact is that every stage in history, rather than uh, settling for what the Lord has, there is a felt need to make addition to rules and regulations in the interest of covering every base. And this is all cast in bold relief in today's gospel. Some of the Pharisees in Jesus' day seems to have been obsessed with ritual purity, washing hands and uh, cleansing uh, market uh, merchandise, uh, scrubbing uh, utensils before eating. So all of this went beyond what the law asked. Not only could such uh, practices easily become uh, challenging, they could reduce a respect for God to a series of external rites. As Jesus states, the result is simply lip service to God. So Jesus' answer is nothing short of brilliant or moves the whole discourse towards that later uh, a moment when all food restriction between Jews and Gentiles would disappear. Friends, evil lurks in the heart, not in the pots and pans. Every serious sin, according to a long-standing church tradition, must proceed from reflection and intentions. These are in in internal functions. So it is evident that theft, murder and greed requires planning and thus constitute matters of the heart, even adultery, malicious talk, envy and blasphemy spring from some premeditation. So it is from within us that evil emanates. And this is what alienates us from God. Concern with external matters can draw us away from this deeper consideration. To spend our energy in seeing that external are in place can bind us to the more important issues of life. Friends, concreteness in worship is a worthy goal. And one not only take, uh, taken uh, lightly, it is hard to be inspired by uh, haphazard liturgies. But look at St. James today underlines the essential qualities of worship. First, we are to esteem the word. We are not to give it a passing hearing. We are to let it take root within us. So it is not sufficient to listen to it. We are called to act on it. And what is authentic worship? To care for the orphans and widows in their afflictions and to keep oneself unstained in the world. In short, friends, live by the word of God. Live with integrity and be open to the needy. So this is the spirit with which we are to approach the altar. And so with our house in order, we need not fear. There will be no inversions of values. This may remind us of the two men who went up to the temple to pray. One was full of himself, his good qualities and his faithful fulfillment, fulfillment of duties. The other sinful and sorrowful only as God's forgiveness and which of the two went home justified before God. Friends, be humble, be observant, be generous, be caring and always be sensitive to the needs of others. May the good Lord bless all of you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit.
God loves you all. See you on Sunday.